Hello folks, my name is Mark Wilson and I'm the founder of AccuModel, where we inspire confidence in hydraulic modeling. This video is a continuation of the previous video where we're looking at hydraulics in closed conduits as they relate to the software EPANet. In the previous video we drew this network with a reservoir at the top with a hydraulic head of 100 feet and then three junctions each at elevation zero and three pipes, pipe A, B, and C, each having a Hazen-Williams roughness of 100, diameter of one foot, length of 1,000 feet. And we also discussed the Hazen-Williams head loss equation for these particular units and the EPNet resistance factor where those are combined at the beginning of the simulation. And we found that for these values over here in units that the simplified equation is 0 0.935 times flow in cubic feet per second raised to the 1.852 power. Okay, this was pretty easy network to solve because we knew exactly what the flows were in each pipe by inspection. Now we're going to make things a little more tough so that we can begin to understand why we need a hydraulic model such as EPNet and how it works. So we're going to close a loop here. We're going to draw a pipe D. It also has roughness of 100, diameter of 1 foot, and a length of 1,000 feet. None of the nodal demands are changing. We don't have to add any more junctions, etc. The network remains the same. Now, to solve this network, we have to do two things. We have to assume a flow direction. So we are going to assume pipe B flows from 2 to 3, pipe C flows from 3 to 4, and the pipe D flows from 2 to 4. So we're using the Bernoulli energy equation to calculate the heads at each node given a flow. And we also need more equations to solve this network. We'll use the continuity equation calculated at each node. And to do that, we also have to assume a direction of calculating the head loss around the loop. So I'm going to draw a circle here. So we're going to do it just a little bit differently, but this will make sense why we have to do this when we get to a more complex network that isn't a triangle. So in this case, we're going to say positive is counterclockwise, and that's okay. It can be different. Like, for example, here the flow goes this way, so a positive head loss would be coming this direction, so that all of the head losses around a loop have to sum to zero. Also, all of the flows into and out of each junction have to sum to zero. That's continuity. Okay, let's go ahead and start writing some equations. We know that the flow in pipe A, this one's going to be easy because there's no loop here. We've got four CFS of demand down here, so we know that we have four CFS up here. We're going to actually have to guess these other three. So we're actually going to call this one Q sub B, Q sub C, Q sub D. So if we write the equations here, we've got the head at node 2 is equal to 100 minus 0 0.935 times 4 raised to the 1.852. OK, we can actually go ahead and solve that one right now. Get my handy dandy spreadsheet out here and we'll type in 4 CFS 100 and you'll remember this one from the last video. We got the head at 2 was equal to 87.82. 87.82. Now the ones that are going to have some unknown in it. H3 is equal to 87.82. So we're going to start with the head at H2. And we've got a head loss through pipe B. And we've got minus 0 0.935 Q sub B to the 1.852. We know that the head at 4 is equal to the head at 3 minus 0 0.935 QC to the 1.852. We could also write head at 4 as H2 
87.82 minus, so that assumes that the flow is coming this way, minus 0 0.935 QD 1.852. So we'd probably use, I'm going to star these two equations. So we've got two equations there. And then we've got three unknowns, QB, QC, QD. So we need one more equation. So if we write the continuity at each node, we know that QA. So we're going to say that flow into a node is negative and flow out is positive. So minus QA and then QB is out. So we're going to have that positive plus QB plus QD plus 1 equals 0. Then we can write another one around junction 3. By the way, these signs, they're kind of arbitrary. You just need to choose a convention, just like we did with the loop arrow. So we could have switched all these signs, but we just need to stay consistent. We need to choose a direction and then stick with it. So if we write this at node 3, we have minus QB plus QC plus 1 equals 0. And then if we write it at node 4, we would have minus QD minus QC plus 2 equals 0. Okay, there's all our equations. Now, what we have to do to solve this is iterate. And actually, all we really have to do is choose one of these flows to guess, and we can rearrange our continuity equations to calculate the other two flows in this particular network based on the one we're guessing. We need to calculate the heads at 3 and 4, and we're going to use these two equations to do it. So we'll have three unknowns, three, three equations. Okay, I've set up this spreadsheet here with all of these equations in it. And we can see that we've got four CFS, or flow at A. And we know that we have a head loss of 12.2 feet. And thus, we have a head at 287.82. It's kind of like we have a boundary condition. can't really iterate that or change that. There's no loop. Okay. So we also have the head loss equation written for pipe B, C, and D. So B, C, and D. Now, what I'm doing here, I've got this cell highlighted. You can see that I'm guessing B, and then I've rearranged the continuity equations for C and D. You can see the formula down here at the bottom, so that based on what I choose for B, continuity is always maintained. Now, the problem with that is we're guessing flow, and that's what we're getting at here when we look at how EPANet works. There's a guess made, and then an error is calculated. So down here, we saw that we had written two equations for the head at 4. And the way we've written it down here in the spreadsheet is we calculate the head at 4 based on the head loss in pipe C and based on the head loss in pipe D. Now we've got a discrepancy here, so that's the error. What we're going to try to do is iterate this until this error is 0 or very close to 0. And when it's within a certain tolerance, we'll say that that is solved. So if the difference down here is 2.4 positive, then I'm going to try 1.5. So that was a little too much. We've got a negative difference. If I had a solver on this spreadsheet, I could uh, just solve for it. Let's try 1.4. Okay, we're back positive again. 1.45. Still positive. 1.46. Oh, now we're negative again. 1.45. 455. Positive again. So we're really close, and we might consider this to be close enough if we define a certain threshold. Okay, we're going to verify using EPANet what we just worked out on paper. So I'm going to draw pipe D in here. Okay, we'll make sure it's got the right properties. A thousand feet long, one foot in diameter, roughness of 100. We're going to go ahead and run that. Okay. And we see that, in fact, EPA now got the same solution. 1.46 in pipe B, 0.46 in pipe C, and 1.54 CFS in pipe D. 
it's showing up as negative here because I drew the pipe from node 4 to node 2 when in fact the flow is going the opposite direction that I digitized. So that's why it will show up in negative numbers. In the next video, we're going to apply this to show how this is actually solved in EPANet. Again, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel and like the video if this was helpful. Doing that will help other engineers that are looking for this type of information find these videos and help them out too. So again, thanks for watching and have a great day.